Folivora. This word may be unfamiliar to most of us in here, but it is the scientific word for a sloth, which is a medium-sized mammal that's closely, most closely related to an anteater. These mammals spend most of their time sleeping and eating. Studies have shown that they spend up to 20 hours a day asleep. When they decide to move, when they can find the strength, their top speed only gets them about six to eight feet per minute. Are you noticing a pattern here? As you see, these mammals are slow. But I want to tell you about a spiritual sloth. This, this person is a slow, lagging, off course, threat to reaching heaven. I'm here to tell you this morning that there's no room in the church for a sloth. The one way to counteract this is to be fast. F, fervent in spirit. A, acquiring knowledge. S, serving the Lord. And T, being time conscious. Open your Bibles with me to Romans 12. I want to read for you Verse 10 and 11. I want us to focus on 11, though. This is where the idea of the sloth and counteracting it comes from. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version because it uses the word that I want us to notice here. Verse 10. Being kindly affectioned to one another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, Look at this, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. To counteract this, we need to be fervent in spirit. It's commanded of us, as we just read in Romans 12. But also in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, it tells us that whatever our hand finds to do it with all of our might, whatever work we are doing, we need to be doing it to the best of our ability. We need to be like Paul in Galatians 1 verse 14 where it talks about how he was exceedingly zealous for the work of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14 12 tells us that we need to have this zealousness for the spiritual gifts and it will be our edification being zealous. You know, God tells us in Revelations 3 verse 16, we can't be lukewarm. We can't be this person that's you know, zealous one day but comes back over here to the other side and doesn't do what he needs to be doing. We need to stay over here and be constantly yearning to do the will of God. We need to be careful, though, because it is possible to be zealous for the wrong reasons. Romans 10 verse 2 tells us of a people who had zeal, but they didn't have the knowledge to back it up. They didn't know what they were going to talk about. Philippians 3 verse 6 tells us that people were zealously persecuting the church. They had the zeal, they just were doing the wrong aspect of it. In order to counteract the slothfulness, we need the zeal, but we also need the knowledge. We need to acquire knowledge to be able to fight it and use the zeal for the Lord. What knowledge do we need, though? Well, Matthew 28, verse 20, tells us that we need to observe all things commanded and to know what the Lord's talking about. We need to have the knowledge of how we need to act. 2 Timothy 2, verse 22 says, To flee youthful lusts, pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. And it tells us to do this with a pure heart. Romans 12, verse 9, if you look there, it's just on the other page. It tells us that we need to let love be without hypocrisy to abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. We have this evil over here that we might be coming back to, but that's, that's turning to our slothful ways. We need to abhor this and cling to what is good. But how do we get this knowledge? It's as simple as getting into the Bible. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If we're studying, we're going to 
understand it. We're going to get this knowledge. Matthew 6.33 tells us, if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it will be given to us. But we need to be searching for it. With this zealousness and the knowledge necessary, we need to now go on and serve the Lord. It's commanded of us in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be steadfast and movable, but we need to be doing this while we serve the Lord. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12 says, What does the Lord require? It tells us that we need to walk in His ways, love Him, and serve Him with all of our heart and soul. So we understand that we need to serve Him because it's commanded of us, but and what, how are we supposed to? Matthew 4.10 tells us we need to have an undivided heart. It says, Him only shall you serve. Luke 16.13, we cannot serve God and mammon. We can't be over here and have our worldly uh, likes and loves over here and try to be serving God on this side. It's not going to work. God is a jealous God. He wants us all or nothing. As we talked about, we cannot be lukewarm. But we need to have a Christ-like attitude. John 13, 14 tells us that Jesus washed our feet. So we also need to be washing the feet of others. We need to have this Christ-like attitude and an undivided heart, but we need to be doing it willingly. 1 Corinthians 9, 17. For do this willingly. We need to be doing it joyfully. Psalms 102 says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing. Why shouldn't we be doing it joyfully? We have this reward in heaven to look forward to. We get to spend an eternity in heaven with God versus an eternity in hell. So we know that it's commanded. We know what, what mindset, what, what heart we need to have, but in what ways can I serve him? How, how can I do this? I may not be 100% uh, uh, good at preaching or I might not be good at doing other things, but, you know, we can do things such as worship. Matthew 4.10, it is written, Worship the Lord, him only shall you serve. We can do it through individual tasks. Mark 13.34 tells us that there was a man who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work, and he commanded the doorkeeper to keep watch. We can do something as simple as, in this statement, we may not be doing the servant, we may not, we not, we may not be doing the uh, man's work, but we can be the doorkeeper, keeping watch. Romans 12, verse 6 tells us, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. We may not all be good at the same thing, but when we work together, we become as one. We need to be serving the Lord. We need to be zealous. But we also need to be time conscious. You see, we can't afford to be a sloth. 2 Peter 3, verse 10 tells us that the Lord is coming as a thief in the night, and all the world will be burnt up. You know, we do not know what will happen tomorrow. What is life? It is a vapor that appears and vanishes, James 4, 14. We need to be careful, because if we are being the sloth and not being fast, we may hear the words in Matthew 7, 23, for those who haven't heard or followed will hear, depart from me, I never knew you. Do we want to say those words? Do we want to hear those words? We as Christians need to be fast, fervent in spirit, zealous for doing the will of God. We need to constantly be searching for ways to help others. We must make sure that we have the knowledge capable to serve the Lord correctly. And an attitude that is Christ-like, with an undivided heart, and a joyful and willing spirit. There's a great day coming, Revelations 20 talks about, so we need to be time conscious. How many people do we know that aren't going to heaven? Do you really want to hear Jesus tell them, or to hear God tell them, depart from me, I never knew you? 
We need to be active in the faith. 2 Timothy 4, verse 6 says, I have run the good race. I have fought the good fight. How are we running the race as Christians? Are we being the sloth or are we being fast? If we're not, I encourage us to become faster in the faith, to be doing the will of God. I encourage us to do whatever is necessary to get us to heaven. For those of us that are Christians, we need to be that fast person. If there are any Christians here today that are wanting to be fast, there's six steps to get us there. We need to hear Romans 10, 17. Believe, Mark 16, 16. Repent, Acts 2, 38. Confess our faith before men, Romans 10, 10. We need to be baptized and put on Christ. Get rid of this sloth and put on Christ as the new man. Acts 2, 22, 16. And we need to live faithfully unto death. If any of us here need to do any of these things today, come now as we stand and see.